Hello and welcome to the John Byrne Composite Kit tutorial video. Inside the kit you'll find all you need to produce a high quality carbon fibre laminate. Let's have a look at what you get inside the kit. Firstly there's the instruction manual that will guide you through the process step by step. You've got a kilo of composite epoxy resin with 270 grams of hardener. You've got some epoxy gel coat with the hardener to go with it. You've got some wax release agent, some mould sealer and mould cleaner to ensure you prepare your mould correctly. You've also got two tubes of 200 GSM carbon fibre and one tube of 375 GSM. We've also put in some different size mixing pots for your resin and your gel coat. There are some brushes for the gel coat and the laminating resin. Also some blue nitrile gloves and some mixing sticks. You'll also need a sharp pair of scissors, a nice scales for measuring out your resin, a hair dryer, some lint free cloth and some kitchen roll to keep everything neat and tidy. Right to get started a good tip is to cut out a paper template first to the shape of the part that you want to produce. Allow about 10 mil extra around the edge of the template to ensure that you'll cut out enough carbon fibre to cover the part. When you've done this, just put it to one side for later. Now before you start doing anything else, ensure your mould is sealed and cleaned using the sealer and the mould cleaner provided. When you've done this, you're ready to apply the wax release agent with another clean cloth. Allow a few minutes for it to harden and then using a polishing action just buff it up. Repeat this process two to three times to ensure your part will come away from your mould when it's cured. A good tip with your brush for the gel coat is to cut it down at a 45 degree angle. This helps encourage the air out of the gel coat as you're brushing it on. Now you're ready to weigh out the gel coat S5. For this size part we're only going to need 50 grams. Be careful to be accurate as this will help when you're measuring out the hardener. And the P7 hardener has got a, a consistency like Vaseline which will help when you're weighing it out on the edge of the cup. When you're happy you've got the right amounts just mix it together using one of your sticks. Now mix it steadily you don't want to introduce too much air and make sure you scrape around the size of the pot to ensure it's all thoroughly mixed. Now you're ready to apply the gel coat with the gel coat brush. Spread the gel coat on carefully and in one direction. Don't use a painting action as this will introduce too much air. Use steady strokes starting at one end of the part and working across to the other side. After you've covered the mould with the gel coat, just check the surface for any air bubbles or dry spots and carefully brush these out or add a little more gel coat if needed. Again, use a nice steady motion so as not to encourage too much air. You can now leave the gel coat to go off for about half an hour to three quarters of an hour. And to check it's ready for the next stage, you need to use your finger. You should be able to run your finger across the surface of the gel coat without any resin sticking to your glove. It should be tacky enough for you to leave an impression, but not so that the resin comes off on your glove. You can now mix up the laminating resin. For this particular part we're going to use 50 grams. But there is a guide within the instruction manual to help you work out how much resin you might need for a different size part. Use your scales to measure out the correct amount of resin and hardener. The resin is thinner than the gel coat but still needs to be mixed thoroughly and not too vigorously to avoid adding too much air. Brush on a thin coat of resin to the mould surface. This will give you a lot more time to put on the carbon fibre. This resin layer will help the gel coat to harden and help prevent any chance of delamination on the cured part. It will also help prevent any print through of the carbon fibre itself.
OK, now we're ready to start cutting out our carbon fibre. Use the template we made earlier to make sure you cut out accurate shapes for your mould. A key thing to remember when we're making carbon fibre laminate is to ensure that the laminate's balanced. By that I mean that the weights uh, work correctly throughout the laminate. So we're going to start with a, a 200 gram layer followed by two layers of the 375 gram and then finished off with a 200 gram layer. Okay, carefully apply the first layer of 200 gram weight carbon fiber. Now this is going to be the layer that everybody will see so you really want to take your time getting this on correctly. Now the laminated resin that we applied to the gel coat will be a little bit tacky so you have to be careful make sure you get it in the right position and then just press it into place very gently and again work in those corners and edges because they'll be the tricky spots they'll be the spots where you're you know, more likely to get an air void so gently work that into place and when you're happy you've got it into place correctly just apply a little bit of resin with the resin brush but what you're trying to do here is just stipple through the wet resin that we've already applied because we want the ratio of glass to resin to be more on the glass side than on the resin side again to give us a nice strong laminate. So once you're happy you've got the resin through on that piece, that first piece, you're ready to go on with the second slightly heavier piece of carbon. Again, applying that as carefully as possible but not as important this time because this obviously isn't going to be seen so it should be a little bit more straightforward this. Again pressing into the corners, into the edges and then bringing through any excess uh, resin through to the surface with the brush and just repeat the process for the third and fourth layer. Okay take your time now on this last piece just to ensure everything's in place properly have a check and see if you've brought through all the, the laminated material to the back. Any dry spots, just apply a little extra resin where you need to, not too much. Again, you've got about two to three hours now before the laminated resin starts to go off. So just take, take your time, ensure the edges are down, the corners, any tricky spots that you've got on your mould. Use your fingers to rub those areas in. Don't overdo it, you don't want to disturb it too much. A good tip now is to use the hairdryer just to warm up the part a little. Uh, this will encourage any little air bubbles, any little air voids just to work their way to the back of the mould. Again, preventing any little air, air voids on the surface of your mould. When you finish with the hairdryer, leave the part somewhere nice and warm to cure overnight. You come back in the morning You'll need something like a plastic spreader or a little wedge just to help demold the part. Don't use a knife as that will damage your mould and it could damage your part. And as you'll see, we've got a nice final result. Just needs trimming back and you're done. Thank you for choosing the John Byrne Composite Kit. If you need any help or if you need any extra components to go with your kit, they're all available at resinsonline.com. If you need any technical assistance, contact us at johnburn.co.uk.